Hello everyone and welcome back to Selwyn for this fifth online chapel service of the term. Once again we're bringing you a reflection on readings of the day as well as prayers, a hymn and a chance to listen to music made by members of the chapel choir recording themselves in their own homes. Today is also the Sunday after Ascension Day so we're better a place to introduce today's worship than from the very top of the tower above the Porter's Lodge. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Here in the chapel, there is only one place to begin on the Sunday after Ascension, the bronze figure of the Ascending Christ on the east wall behind me. As our college history relates, and you can read it on the college website, originally the East End was intended to house a Rarados, but it was Niklaus Pevsner, that great historian of the buildings of England, who suggested that the altar and Kemp's noble window above representing Christ enthroned should be linked by an ascending Christ with black floating figures on the white wall. And he recommended the Swedish artist Karen Jonsson for the work. These were dedicated by the Bishop of Ely on the eve of Ascension Day in 1958, just over 60 years ago. Our readers today are both chapel wardens recording from home in the lockdown. A reading from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, beginning at the 24th verse. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone, and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you, and make you follow my statutes, and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Here ends the first reading. Before we hear today's gospel reading, here are Rowan Bayliss Hoyt and Paul Newton Jackson to sing verses from Psalm 68. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Like as the smoke vanishes, so shalt thou drive them away. And like as wax melteth at the fire, so let the ungodly perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. For sing unto God and sing praises unto his name. Magnify him that rideth upon the heavens as it were upon an horse. Praise him in his name, Jah, and rejoice before him. He is a father of the fatherless, and defendeth the cause of the widows. 
Even God in his holy habitation He is the God that maketh men to be of one mind in an house and bringeth the prisoners out of captivity. But let us the runagates continue in scarceness. O God, when thou wentest forth before the people, when thou wentest through the wilderness, the earth shook and the heavens dropped at the presence of God. Even as Sinai also was moved at the presence of God, who is the God of Israel. Thou, O God, sentest a gracious rain upon thine inheritance, and refreshedst it when it was weary. Thy congregation shall dwell therein. For thou, O God, hast of thy goodness prepared for the poor. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St John, chapter 17, beginning to read at the first verse. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence, before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. Here ends the reading. Our reflection today is given by the Reverend Andrew Norman, who is priest in charge of Arnside and Beetham in the Diocese of Carlisle. He came to Selwyn in 2009 and rose to the dizzying heights not only of Chapel Warden, but of JCR President, and it's a great delight to have him back with us today. First, though, here is the choir to sing today's anthem by William Byrd, known vos relinquam orthanos, I will not leave you as orphans.
During my years as an undergraduate at Selwyn, the chaplain was fond of quoting these words from T.S. Eliot's Little Gidding. What we call the beginning is often the end, and to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. The past weeks and months have been for us all a profound season of endings and beginnings. As individuals, as communities, as a country and as a world, we have all adapted at different stages to the effects of physical and social distancing, isolation from those we love most, and a disruption to our usual rhythms of life, work and rest, which we've discovered are so easily taken for granted. For some, this has been a time of flourishing. For others, a time of acute anxiety and worry. It has brought sadness and grief and pain for thousands, whilst in the midst of this darkness, revealing in the everyday stuff of life, glimpses of the light, in acts of, act of kindness, compassion, generosity and goodness, which have so warmed our hearts. For many, myself included, it's been a time of reorientation and reflection, where even in the valley of the shadow of death, we have seen the murmur and promise of resurrection, of new life and new strength for the future. As the ancient prayer of the Orthodox Church reminds us, and weeping o'er the grave, we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia reminding us that even when things are at their worst, nothing is irredeemable, and that the unending hope offered in Jesus never fails. We will have all had to bring certain aspects of our lives to an end in order to make a new beginning, in ways we might never have expected. Seeming challenges have become opportunities, and together we have witnessed in many ways a renewal of interest and investment in what matters most in life. So often the things that in our usual busyness we lose sight of, but pray that we don't forget as we move patiently under God towards healthier times. The Easter season is one of beginnings and endings, from the desolation of the crucifixion to the newness of eternal life that first Easter morning. From Jesus's ascension back to the Father 40 days after his rising again, to the sending of the promised Holy Spirit at Pentecost. They are days which remind us of how the story of God in Christ is one continually reshaping and refashioning our lives and our times, speaking words of comfort and peace to troubled hearts. Today, the Sunday after Ascension Day, we are reminded of this as we remember Jesus being taken back up into heaven, bearing the wounds of the cross, marking the conclusion of his earthly life, yet promising that a new beginning is coming, when through his followers, the whole world will be able to share in the grace and joy and belonging of the gospel message. Because the spirit of the risen, ascended and glorified Lord will be forever at work. We see that new horizon anticipated in today's reading from John's Gospel, where after talking with his disciples on the night before his death, we are told Jesus looks up into heaven and prays to his Father, asking that his friends might be consecrated, upheld and guided for the work that will be given for them to do in the future. This will involve the pain of an ending, marked by Jesus's agony on the cross. But ultimately, they are words which speak the promise of a new beginning the new beginning of the resurrected existence, and with it the fresh perspective and focus it will give for those who seek to follow in the way of Christ. Importantly though, 
This new beginning is also a call to unity. May they be one as we are one, a call to work together, whoever we are, so that our lives and the lives of those around us might echo the love of God, the love that casts out all fear and apprehension, isolation and division. Each of us has a part to play. No one is forgotten. All are included. As we prepare for whatever the new normal will look like in this time of endings and awaited new beginnings, may each of us, wherever we are, find refreshment in that message of hope and transformation. Praying for grace that with humility and courage we might know for ourselves and so encourage others in the love and in the service which the Lord, in whom all things hold together, has commended to us all. Amen. In a moment, our assistant chaplain, Roger Revel, will lead us in prayer. First, do join us in singing hymn number 128 in the New English Hymnal, Eternal Monarch, King Most High. we join together in prayer, we remember especially all who are suffering as a result of the coronavirus. We continue to pray for those in hospital and for all who fear for the health of loved ones, for those concerned about employment, and for all who are suffering financial hardship. We pray for all those who are bereaved and for those who have died, and we give thanks for all who support others in our communities. As students commence their exams online, we pray for them and for all who are adjusting to new ways of working. 
we ask for your blessing on them, wherever they are. Lord God, be with us all in our different situations, in the ordinary and in the extraordinary, in new beginnings and in endings. May we all know your peace and the comfort that your presence brings, now and always. A prayer for the seventh Sunday of Easter. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom and heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us, and exalt us to the place where our Savior Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The College Prayer O Lord, the resurrection and the life of them that believe, who didst enrich thy servant George Augustus Selwyn with thy manifold gifts of grace, grant that all who serve thee here may be taught by his example to serve in their several callings to the honor of thy name, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance on you and grant you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>